your homework, Larry. I I don't know, sir. Hey, Tritus. Happy Sunday to you. 
Hopefully uh, you're having a better day than the price action of uh, the one coin to rule them all, Bitcoin, and many altcoins that have followed in its footsteps. Some worse than others. Ethereum doesn't even care. Ethereum doesn't even know what's going on right now, like with, with Bitcoin. So that that's one very interesting variable. Uh, Cake hit the third target of the trade setup finally. I mean, big round of applause for that one. It took a minute, but it happened. Dude. Cake. Um, I just been waiting and waiting, and waiting for that alert to go off. We got it. Uh, so yeah, so that divergence the Bitcoin got, I mean, kind of suspect, right? Where you thought maybe you could turn, it could turn into triple divergence on lower lows. So uh, all you're hoping for now is uh, for this sell-off to be really weak. Another, you know, and it could take a while, and then we get another island that is lower than the previous level, and then that would just be a continuance of the bullish divergence. But uh, it's very, very rough here. There's not so much support looking left. It's kind of, you know, I, there. I guess there are many peaks everywhere, right? A high from February 9th, exactly what you're trying to test and hold right now. One time, second time, but you just made the lowest price. Bitcoin just made the lowest price since March 6th. So that's not really good when you're making lower lows, even on wicks, right? So, um, I mean, you would think that eventually 46K, which is just a valley from March 5th, but eventually like 43,687 if this uh, keeps up. But, you know, it's not over yet. It's it's really not over. And this is what we're talking about. Like the sell-off continues. You chop around. You keep losing that momentum. You get a third valley, and it just ends up being like that, or a triple divergence, which we've seen. It plays up brilliantly. That's where the bottoms, come, actual bottoms, come in for much greater waves to the upside. Fortunately, you have no help on the daily. Something, uh, somewhat, I mean, I guess historic happened today or is happening right now. You got to go to the daily. You look at it. First time over sold since March, March 17th, March 18th, 2020. Right since the COVID crash. That's. How, that's like how low this relative strength index is currently sitting at 29. Mm. I mean, that's big going on. All right. So uh, at least you got that going on, right? So eventually maybe that. But the problem is, look, highest level of negative momentum of all time on the daily right now. It, minus 1448. Never been that uh, that high. And this, that has something to do with the price. Like it's going to be even it's going to be impossible to not, you know, this was 20K, dude. like, you know, the last bull cycle buying climax before the correction began, right? So you, you can't when you're 20K, this is the 50s. So, uh, yeah, no, no, uh, no edge yet on the daily still. No Japanese candlestick reversals, nothing, man. Just uh, a lone 78% retrace right here, you know, X, A, B, C, D, with on the daily, zero support, really. I mean, the next real support on the daily is like $45,000. That low from March 1st. I'm sorry, not March 1st, February 28th. Oh yeah, February 28th, and then it goes to the first, yeah. So that's it, man. Continuation of selling down 4%, $2,000 like it was a joke. Yeah, man. Auto, I mean, whoever's selling, they just got their bots set up, auto sell, right? Look at what's happened. Really, kind of, you can see it too. Like these little distribution patterns. One, two, three, dump. One, two, three, kind of four, dump. One, two, three, dump. Right? It's like, you know, the consolidation is uh, pretty symmetric, uh, symmetrical, like in its, in its own way, right? I mean, just you keep making these mini lower highs before the sell off, and it's normally like three or four of them. So, um, Let's go to the weekly and just look at it where it's not going to be pretty. It's just uh, getting fall through price action after the bearish engulfing candle last week. First level of negative momentum will be uh, confirmed, you know, at the close in an hour 46 minutes. But the first level of negative momentum on the weekly since October 5th. And, and really on the weekly, I mean, again, like 45K support and also support resistance at uh, 38K. So. Again, though I believe the wave is over. The X to A, that initial wave is finally done. It only took, right? From the lowest point to the 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 high, it only took 399 days for that first weekly wave 
to complete. Now you're probably working on this new wave, right? That will probably, it won't be near as large as the first one, right? Or we either talk about A, B, C, D, or you talk about, uh, or A, B, C, right? This was A, you're working on B, the short-term wave, and then you get another long-term wave, you know, and that's C. Or you talk about standard harmonics, where it's like X to A, and then now you're working on A to B. And the retrace will be mild, moderate, could be shallow. But, um, yeah, man, what kind of party? We just had an over year long party, you know, on Bitcoin. So, there's good news, though, I guess, with all this correction going on for Bitcoin. That was, it had to happen at some point, man. You can't just go straight up. Remember, six months straight of just higher highs. Right, uh, so this is the you know it's crazy it's it's kind of funny, and I and poetic maybe, but it's like uh, April historically the absolute best performing month in the history of Bitcoin eleven years right, this was the worst April of all time it's not even over yet there's still like six days left or something, but so far worst April ever like on record for for Bitcoin, in terms of depreciation and value, so uh, hey it happens man all right so the where's what's the Silver lining of possible good news. There is another, right? There's Luke Skywalker and then there's someone else, Leia. This is Leia, I guess, right? And this nerdy uh, analogy where this asset, Ethereum, is up 2% right now. 2%. And even when Bitcoin was at its lowest point, it was only down very little. I don't even know if it was down on the day. It's right around break even. Um, so nice uptrend, and it's still holding this heart line. Look, resistance, 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 support, resistance, 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 support, 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 support. Right, it's holding it. So um, <sighs> bullish convergence going on. It people would start saying right now. You would think, oh hey man, it's starting to look like a head and shoulders or something. I understand what people would identify and see here. I get that. And I think it just really has to do... It's not going to perform very well if it breaks down, right? If Bitcoin goes to 45k, whatever, yeah, it might see uh, $2,000 again, 1872 but It's probably not hitting a measured move. And this asset is in a bull trend, 100% in a bull trend until it gets a candle close below 1550 remember Bitcoin is substantially lower than it was on March 25th and substantially to be exact Bitcoin is down 5% from its March 25th low down 5% Ethereum on the other hand is up 45% from that March 25th low Wow that is just uh, a statement and I don't really know exactly how to take it exactly like you know I mean this thing could catch up with Bitcoin and start dumping but it is perform outperforming the living crap out of Bitcoin right now and it's uh it's noteworthy and it's something to just pay attention to right and it, uh, a theory to Bitcoin chart is definitely uh, telling you why too Hey Mitch, can we look at X United States Steel stock? Thanks. Maui Jr. I think. Uh, thank you for the twenty. Appreciate it. We can if you want, man. We can look at uh, U.S. Steel. Well, Bitcoin just uh, you know it scalpers come in, it rallies, but this is just getting sold into, man. There's just no edge, nothing. It not a support looking left, nothing on the indicators the oscillators nothing implies a reversal it has been a route man what is it uh, 10 out of the past 12 days have been all red and those ten and those two days of the 12 that were green you might as well have just had a closed market nothing it was like indecision candles so it's pretty much 12 of 12 devastation of longs but again it it started getting you know you felt that weird psycho shillers of moon boy coins scammers man people creating their own tokens and pumping it on these exchanges I, dude it was just a wipeout had to happen 
So a lot of those people that enter the space have been wiped out completely. And they may not, they probably won't come back till Bitcoin pivots, recovers 80% of its value from its losses so far, right? Yeah, be FOMOing back in. Yeah, the Dogecoin crap too. Yeah, I mean, that was big. That was a huge part of it. Was it 45 cents plus? It's now 24 cents, down 10% today. Oh, I'm so surprised, dude. But it was just, oh God, it was. It wasn't even Bitcoin though. See, Bitcoin never even showed that frothiness, that craziness, like, oh my God, dude, euphoric. It wasn't like that. It was just the the ancillary part of this market, right? With NFTs and again, scam coins that just pop up out of nowhere. And then they just, uh, man, those developers threw a lot of money into marketing and, and hyping their coins. Okay, well, let's look at uh, the daily. That really isn't like you know. Here, here's the uh, you know. Don't don't get mad at me here, but like there's kind of a bearish bias argument on Ethereum. Now we're gonna see, but you do have right. Remember that was so perfect. I mean, it was literally text. But you can go back to any stream where I review Ethereum between probably March 29th all the way up to April 16th and beyond. Um, this pattern was there. It went to the gold, the gold mean ratio, which was exactly the pattern completion zone of the bearish deep crab pattern, and it, it reacted. And now, so that's one top, and you can, then you got your second top, you know, and that's kind of like a double top confirmation high at the pattern completion zone of the structure. So that's kind of <clears throat> that's kind of really bearish, you know. Like flip it over, that'd be like bullish, like double bottoming at the pattern completion zone of a harmonic. Composite you know. operator stuff. What's up, Jameson? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, some some are looking good, you know? Some are, yeah. But, you know, if you own those while Bitcoin's dumping like this, you know, you're you're only, you're only making Satoshis, you're not making any US dollars, right? Your US, you will lose US dollars. That's okay, because once Bitcoin eventually recovers, then, you know, you're winning, right? But uh, you just gotta, you gotta be mindful, like, um, with this going on, it's so strong right now, but you know, it could always catch up and getting wrecked, right? I mean, so I just, uh, what's CPT? What's up, CPT? Hydra? Dude, what is this, Captain America? What's going on here? CPT tipped $100. Hydra, if you could. Not much data to work with, but if you could take a look. If you wish, CPT. Thank you, man, for that uh, mega contribution right there. Uh, you wish is my command. All right. Uh, yes. So you don't have any kind of bearish divergence, really, at all. At least you got that going on the daily. Like, man, it'd be terrible if you had a double top at the PCZ of the pattern with buyer exhaustion. Very apparent. You didn't make a higher high. So. Um, this market has had a really good run. You know that if you've been participating in it for a long time, uh, for you know at least sub 10k last summer to kind of April 13th of this year, it's been real good. But now it's just uh, hard justifying value areas. Like even Ethereum, it's outperformer. It's amazing. If it holds this hard line, it could just keep on going. 2500, 3k. I love it. You know what uh, Scott Carney talks about the harmonic guru, right? Wrote the book on these structures. He's just <clears throat> he talks about uh, what you want to see <clears throat> on bearish patterns in bullish trends is you just want the uh, the price action to consolidate, just to continue sideways, right? Thirty bars, all right. So <clears throat> on the daily, it'd be like a month. You're about. Uh, you're about 10 days in. So you need about 20 more days of sideways consolidation before you can say, all right, the bullish bias is still very real. It's at, it's underperforming. It can't catch any asks, right? It's too much demand, not enough supply. And then it would continue on up, right? So he just called it like with this rule, the 30 bar rule with these harmonics. So, so not so great on the daily. And you know, again, the four hours started being like, oh man, we head and shouldering now. There's still that double top, right? So, and I don't really like uh, locally, like you made a high and you sold off. Now you made a, a lower high. 
very slightly lower. I hate those, man. So it's just not uh, the best conditions for longs, right? It's just not good conditions because you know the macro sucks so bad for Bitcoin. Like, oh, an altcoin shows a potential long opportunity. It doesn't matter. It's, it's going to get destroyed at the US dollar. There's just no way. It's going to not get stopped out. So, uh, I guess we have a Litecoin that's down 3.27%, right? Here we go, you know, uh, it showed the divergence, uh, caught no bids, so that's, the probability is very high that you're gonna show triple divergence and you might be at 195. And, but still, this could be an incredible long opportunity on Bitcoin or on, on Litecoin. You get down to 195, you get down to the bottom of this potential wedge, Right, and you show more divergence, you get oversold, and then you show tail end divergence on the RSI. Man, there could be opportunity. It's just not yet. Too soon. Too soon on Litecoin to be really confident. And the retrace is a little too shallow, right? You think from your low to high, it's probably like a 618. No, it almost got to a 786, 203. So that's where you start talking about deep value areas between 203 and 186. So um, it's just literally aping Bitcoin right now locally on price. So Bitcoin keeps selling off, then Litecoin's going to eventually see 195 and, and maybe 180. And you'd still be within the structure and then down at those levels, you'd have uh, a better argument for value. And that's where you might have even a better argument on the MACD and RSI. So too early to be really strong and long for an actual strategic trade or something entry, but uh, so patience would be required on this. It had such a good run, man. How many freaking times for how many months was it amazing, incredible? Okay, you're correcting some, get over it. Bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei. Go do uh, just like you know we didn't start start looking at it again four days ago. But look at like Bitcoin dominance, you know, just so you're on the right page. I mean, 53% market cap was kind of like a resistance at some point, you know, back in uh, 2018, a couple times, a few times, and then like after that was 49.66. Man, you you like almost got there. It looks like you're working on it. It definitely looks like you're working on going to to that. That little ice line. That that's a very real ice line. Look, July 2017, September 2017, a couple times. November 2017. Look, a peak. April 8 of 2018. So that's it. And, and if you fall below that, man, the there's no data, on, like really until like 39% mark. Could you imagine that? Bitcoin being 39% total market cap. I, I, it's kind of hard for me to fathom. So. But that's like a that's good for Ethereum. And oh yeah, so we look at Bitcoin dominance, and now we're gonna look at Ethereum and Bitcoin. Dude, look at this, bullishly engulfing on the daily. Oh, sorry, that's that old. I don't know, man. All my work didn't save, you know, a couple days ago, and uh, so yeah, an engulfing candle, 5.79 percent up on the day, and it broke out, right? I mean, it was not the it was the first time you had a premature breakout you sold off made a higher low than previous low and then you're going again and now it's like you're a no man's line there's literally nothing here okay uh there's nothing here till 5.2 million satoshis or whatever it is for ethereum i mean i mean just look on the daily like it's it's like straight down straight up straight down straight up straight down straight up straight down that's the, yeah there's like one time like october 2017 that's what you're just kind of right at beyond that it's like every time it's up and down okay so why would you not eventually make it up there you, you probably will you probably will. If you zoom out and you look at the jumped across the creek, remember back in early January, that was identified. This is Wyckoff accumulation. And if you're talking about a target of kind of like a range or an inverse head and shoulders, whatever you want to call it, um, you're talking about 6.3 million Satoshis or whatever. 63,184 right here. Okay, so that that's, and then above that, man, if you get above 5.7 million sats or whatever, I mean, you're talking like 8.5 million sats. Very real possibility. Dude, this this is like something that, think about the size of this structure of consolidation. I mean, until the breakout, the real breakout, April 20th, uh, 955 days of consolidation, man. So it, to me, it's like the composite operator himself is done. He's, he's uh, spent all this time 
acquiring his position, accumulating, reaccumulating, and now we're in the, the latter phases of Wyckoff accumulation where now the markup begins to where like this is exactly where eventually assets like this throughout history on multiple markets into just doing this eventually yeah they eventually just mark they go in the markup phase and they could even go higher how many times do we see it on the altcoins man now like the bitcoin pairing showing very similar structures it's good so it's great for ethereum uh probably not that great for bitcoin you know so just allocate accordingly So yeah, I wish we were all communing together on different circumstances, but unfortunately, this has to happen, Larry, right? So we're going to be here for the good times, the bad times, the no times. But I'll tell you, the past six months has been almost all good. Very little bad. So, let's look at uh, XRP for a minute. That has certainly, unfortunately, broken below 112. Let me get to that... Uh, other chart with all the data, Bifinex. Yeah, so here is XRP that actually did make it. You know, it made it back down to 88, 86 cents, 95 cents. Uh, it, you know, it was just one level of consolidation, right? Congestion. And it, it's above it. But it's back tested it for the first time ever. Never happened for until today, yesterday. So, uh, well, two days ago, technically. So, um, there's no edge. Eventually, if a pivot occurs here and you start reversing, then hidden bullish divergent argument starts becoming a reality where you have a low and now a much, much higher low with much higher levels, much higher lows on price, right? And uh, you gotta see that maturation. You gotta see the histogram island start losing negative momentum. But it's just gonna be really tough. Like I don't know how it can hold up if Bitcoin marks down to 43,000, 44K or whatever, 42K. There's just no way it holds. So if it didn't hold, I mean, good chance you're going down to like 60 cents again. It's like the high point from September 2018 and you had price action correlation December of last year and early this year. So that's where it's going if Bitcoin continues to mark down now bitcoin can hold here and starts actually showing a an indication of reversal on like a daily time scale maybe even more on the four hour then maybe this is it this could be the bottom like this is definitely where assets do in time i mean like sometimes they will uh bottom out here at this is the top of like all congestion above this is kind of like nothing you know where it could just go insane again and attempt a, a massive rally to near two dollars again so that's it's trying to hold but you really need help from bitcoin sorry xrp moon boys i get it like you want it to be its own thing but it can't just it can't perform with bitcoin doing what it's doing just the, the incessant selling auto dumping it's not good for xrp it's not good for ethereum or anything really just think about if bitcoin wasn't dumping what ethereum and xrp would be doing right now they would probably be I mean, I think that uh, Ethereum would probably be at like three thousand dollars. XRP probably would be on the way to two seventy six. It's just not reality. This is reality, and it's staring you in your face, and it's just nothing good right now. You know, I, I wouldn't say just be slightly being oversold is good. I mean, it's good that you finally made it. it took forever, but um, you could understand how much more oversold you can get so that's why i'm saying it's not really that great i mean just like september 2019 you're talking about 20 you know november 2019 you were 22 like covid crash low you were at 15.7 so i mean you know and look i mean divergence divergence occur occurred on both of those times so you're just <sighs> mm, what a route we got an hour and a half till your weekly candle close. Thanks for the 1,658 people tuned in. If you're joining the live stream, hit the like button, the bell, and sub. Thanks for the 311 likes so far. Don't take it out on me, man. This market, I can't control this market, all right? If I could, we'd be at $10 billion. These streams are 
Oftentimes they can be painful, all right? All right, so let's look at the uh, first request. That is just unreal. Ever since it hit that, ugh, it's so good, dude. It was like sharkish, you know. Uh, steel, U.S. Steel. There, what was the request? Uh, Do you say anything? You just want to look at it. Well, I mean, remember back in uh, COVID crash, you know, it didn't quite hit 113% retrace, 105% retrace. But what happened? What was so spectacular and educational about U.S. Steel? That was an ice line, 2016 ice line. Well, you fell below it, oh God, but you sprung, and what did you do? Could someone tell me what this asset did when it sprung? What was the next thing that occurred? I will wait for your answer, just make sure you're awake. You know, I don't even know if you can, the stream's on right now. There we go. Here we go. Back test. Yep, you got it. Back test of the spring. When you spring, you then back test it. But what was so spectacular about this one, man? You you sprung, you back test the spring not once, but then twice. And on the second back test of spring, you showed an edge. Oh, dude, it doesn't get better than that. You know, and then it like crapped around and, and almost went down again, but it was just like, oh, there's more, even more accumulation. Right here on on this low, so before the major market, that could have been like a fake out, you know, scare people for it really went. But that anything above that 663, 616 ice line zone, man, that was bullish, and it's it's gone since then. It's beautiful. Great time to be alive and investing. Crypto's volatility affords so many opportunities. People will write about this unique time in the future. Thanks for all the TA image. It's informative, inspiring, and entertaining. Is that a join? Brian Smith, thanks for the 2420 super chat. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, Mr. X, thanks for the $25 super chat. Uh, EBS God, Biotech. I don't want to, but I, I will because he requested her. I hate Biotech, man. It's like, dude, FDA stuff. Like, you have to be really tapped into, like, the what they're doing like hardcore because like dude they're oh man an fda report or they're working on some clinical trial and it fails or they killed somebody or they get they made someone caught they caused cancer for somebody on one of their clinical trials uh, 10 years later i mean it's like the worst I, I hate that market biotech because it's like it doesn't matter what's setting up on the chart well, and, and a lot of the companies that just inherently just don't make money right they're all dependent on the research, and oftentimes the research just gets shut down by the FDA. So, yeah, it's uh, it was the original S coin market. It was before S coins showed up to the party in 2017, like the big one, right? The big altcoin inception, right? That there were altcoins that existed before 2017, but that altcoin boom, man, like 2000, just. It was like, it was like, uh... And then, just like that... There are 2,000 new S coins. That's what I meant, okay? So. Hi, Mitch. If Bitcoin trades sideways in the 45-50K range for two to three weeks, could all coins rally? Oh, uh, absolutely. Right? I mean, they, they're trying to rally with Bitcoin dumping incessantly. So, yeah, Bitcoin just doesn't dump to lower its lowest low of the sell-off every single day yeah for sure they got a chance man but just again look at the day it's like every single day is making the lowest low of the of the markdown every day man J including today hour 21 minutes it will be certain again so you got a new week coming so maybe you know think you know things will change or shift right uh, that can happen reallocation portfolios end of weeks end of months right so uh we'll see terrible 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 week so yes that could happen but uh, do i see anything with bearish divergence it sold off that's a, look how powerful u.s steel is right you go from this is testament to bullish trends so education stuff right uh you had 
very real bearish divergence okay on us steel a high a high the highest side of the rally and pending price action reversal why you sell off what happens right after the bearish divergence plays out you then develop you're developing you're in the midst of it right now hidden bullish divergence impending price action continuation implied and it's like one valley and a second valley and somehow dude somehow a piercing line reversal yes that's a piercing line japanese candlestick reversal where you your candle you have two candles right you had a red candle and then you're where the close is right 2150 and then the characteristic of the second candle is you open lower than the previous candles close. It certainly did. It opened at 2113 and then it pierced through at least 50% of the previous candles body. This one went up like 80%. So very strong. And you know, you're getting some follow through off of that. So uh, it could be like confirmation low, hidden bullish difference of the daily. It's gonna continue. It looks like it very well continue its, its rally, but um, not a value area or anything, right? But, but love the higher lows, love the trend, it's beautiful. Uh, so yeah, I'm just we looked in there. I'm not sure if it's actionable for long, but that is definitely implying right there, right? All that stuff's implying continuation of the upside. So it hit, hit a 50% retrace from the height of the structure all the way up February 2018 to the low point, 50% pullback. I, I would think eventually on U.S. Steel, you got like a pretty real resistance at like 3164. I think you you'll you probably make it there, but eventually in the end. You're looking for 44.20, right? That's that's the top of this mega range you've been in. So, yeah, and the thing is, you could pull back, right? You could correct. As long as it makes a higher low now than the 16.79, it's going to remain bullish, right? But you had a good opportunity. There was there was the time, right? The time to request the asset was in August of last year, not now. But it doesn't mean it can't continue on based on like what we're seeing short term on the oscillators. So, okay, accumulation and higher highs, very good. All right, we're gonna look at this next one. I've never heard of my life. It's on uh, KuCoin. It's up thirteen point six six percent today. Uh, on the daily, it uh, hidden bullish divergence about to go positive so it could continue its uh, attempted rally how much data do we have a trend line or something I'm just trying to make something like what do I well it obviously never got back down to that that demand line down there I don't think there was a harmonic or really anything I mean maybe from this low what what's the question dude I mean What's the question about this asset uh, that is up substantially? Not so it's not an entry area. There is no entry area on Hydra right now. But it's trying to hold above the stable fifth low. Swaps at twenty-five dollars. Hey Mitch, glad to be catching a live stream. Someone was talking about Sol and Discord. I didn't even know there was a Sol shit coin. So I looked at Sol on NYSE and it looks nice. Check it out. Well, there's SOL shit, or the S going, excuse me, oh my god, dude, what have you done? I was just literally reading what he was saying, so don't even hold that against me, that's not fair. Uh, yeah, if you want to look at the SOL to trigger everyone, I guess, sure, we'll, we'll add it to the list, okay. But yeah, SOL, US dollar tether, it was like parabolic run, it's just continued going, and there's just gonna be those, right? So, in hindsight, on this one, you know, you broke a, a demand line, or a supply line, excuse me. You broke the supply line, it's been going great ever since. So, um, I would think $38 on the daily if we're trying to set up their highest point would be a target, then $47 Michael after that. Parker tip $25. Miss, sorry, this is another biotech, but just wondering what you thought of this asset to OCGN over $11. Uh, I don't know, but. I can guarantee it will look at it. Yeah. So they're in the end. Wow, four hours, pretty good. I mean, divergence continued, developed triple divergence. One, two, three. On the third time, your RSI was finally oversold. And then you began then you, the breakout. And now you're rallying. And it's just been a mild retrace so far from your high to low. 
you know, 382, right? So you're thinking there's probably more upside on this. All it has to do is just make a higher low than $20. You know, say maybe maybe dips, it dips goes to twenty three fifty. That's fine. Makes a higher low, then runs again, and I think like thirty eight, forty dollars, fifty dollars. And if it if it's really gonna actually do insane stuff, you know, you do have fib extensions. You got like sixty one dollars up there, but I I have no idea, man. It's Hydra. There's not much data on it. It's in a really nice uptrend for now. Um, but you've met, I mean, like, again, since the breakout of that supply line, the asset is up uh, 60%. So it's not really actionable for anyone right now at this current time. It was, it's a little overbought, and it's just had ex tons of positive MMO, right? Uh, so you're requesting it kind of late, right? 130% APR, APY on Hydra coin i just don't i don't get that like i mean maybe someone could logistically explain it to me how that that even makes sense right where hey i'm gonna throw this much i'm gonna throw you know whatever a hundred thousand dollars into hydra and then i get a hundred percent so i get a hundred thirty percent do i get a hundred thirty thousand how does that work man I get the ones that are like, oh, two to five, six percent, you know, yield or something. I get even what is Ethereum still like eighteen percent, but one hundred thirty percent sounds like almost too scammy, too good to be true, right? Thanks for looking at yeah, it's not. It's like BitConnect, right? Yeah, see, that just is like good luck, man. Is that a joint? Very good luck. That sounds too good to be true. So you know the proverb. It's it probably is. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't touch anything like that. Just me, but hey, maybe I'll just miss out on a lifetime opportunity on Hydra coin. Dang. Oh, what a look, nice little. Yeah, so Bitcoin is. Uh, wow, $1,780 off its low point. It's pretty. Pretty nice, man. Nice little Sunday surprise. Up uh, four percent, roughly, from its lows that we just witnessed. Uh, a, a, what minutes ago? Moments ago? Nice. Oh yeah. So you had one that uh, had a great run, and now it's uh, it's pulled back. I mean, real bad. It's correcting. So no structural development, right? It's a straight line down. It's correcting bad. And you're probably like, oh, it looks like a Gartley or something. Yeah, maybe maybe it's Gartley. But I don't like the oscillate. I mean, I, I like how you're oversold, but you're not showing any kind of exhaustion. The negative momentum's continuing to build, right? Eventually bullish divergence will develop. Let's see the weekly. While wow, hitting the two fell below the 200 week moving average for the first time since August of 2019. Gross. Bearish, uh, wow, you're in the midst of bearish convergence on both oscillators. You're not oversold, you're, but you are your lowest relative strength index level since May of 2019. So multi-year lows, technically. Uh, there's no Japanese candlestick reversal indicator. There's no edge on the weekly. You're below that support. 74 bucks or, or whatever uh, I mean maybe you want to monitor it or something but I'm not touching it yet I wouldn't be touching it yet there's there's just nothing like is there a wedge no nah. it's just nothing is there support not really what what's the support's really like $49 that's probably your savings bet an 88% retrace probably down there and it would probably be I know you could anchor for X March 24th last year but you could also anchor down there and let there be no doubt that's a, that's it that's Gartley stuff you're at the PCZ so it's great eye you know amazing eye but you have no help right I mean it's it's a lone harmonic by itself and it just closed at its lowest level so maybe add it to your watch list and monitor it for the sake of education and let's just see how it goes but that's that's beautiful right exit it's perfect 61% retrace on B 78.6% retrace on D you know, 85% retrace on C, that's fine. Like, this is perfect Gartley, but 
There's no divergence on the oscillators. There's no confirmation low. There's no Japanese candlestick reversal. There's no Bulkowski reversal structure, nothing. So it's just like, all right, cool. Pay attention to EBS. Let's see what happens, okay? Remember, we're always, we're always looking for a certain set of variables, not just a bullish Gartley, right? We gotta have everything. And we don't have to settle as traders. We can trade multiple markets, multiple assets, multiple sectors. So why settle? Why force oneself to trade EBS just because it's right out of PCZ? The argument's just not strong enough, okay? Even if it does reverse here, you gotta have like rules, right? It's that cake baking analogy, I, I that video on. If you haven't seen it, you need to. Only like 25K, y'all have seen it. Uh, or maybe not even, that was the Fib video, Fibonacci video. You should watch the cake baking video because I go into all that, what you really want to see. It's the tree peak guy meme. <clears throat> oh yeah, we were here. Dude, we were here on SOL. Yeah, dude. Up 8.36%, uh, bullish engulfing candle on Wednesday. Nice divergence at the 200 day moving average, testing and touching the 200 day moving average for the first time since August 3rd of last year. Yeah, yeah, this is this one's great, right? This is the one we looked at and it was, it was awesome. Oh yeah, dude, Soul SOL back above. Look at this, April 2015, December 2015 ice line. I mean, August 2012 ice line, November 2011 ice line. Okay, so there's like a couple more. Wow, that's a bit. This is huge, dude. If you can get back above like 1028 right there, those are the first time ever I think it was created. Yeah, 2008, 2009. You're you're just slightly below that. Get above that, man. And SOL could go nuts. I would think 1433 is gonna be your target. 1433. If you get above 1028, you get one bottom, a second bottom. Could be a huge potential double bottom. On SOL, not SOL US dollar tether, I'm talking about SOL on New York Stock Exchange. Okay, the semiconductor asset. Sweet. Hey, where are all the, the S coin shillers spamming from their Telegram group? They don't exist anymore, do they? No, nah, they don't show up on days like this because the, the asset isn't pumping at its highest point, right? So they can't scam you. So they can't dump on your head. Get how it works. Hopefully, if you're a new market participant and you're newer sub to this channel, you got to witness and experience what we just witnessed, like what we just saw, right? In the past couple weeks, past 12 days. You saw, if you were watching, how many of them came in trying to spam their coins. They don't exist anymore. They got banned, of course, but like they kept coming in waves. They're not here today. So, yeah, definitely looks uh, pretty interesting. Definitely one worth paying attention to, all right? SOL, not the S coin. That is also doing amazing, you know, apparently, like from what I've seen. All right, you wanted to see OCGN. I mean, it found a zone of support, congestion area between 486, 38, and it bounced off of that, and it went up 3.66% on Friday, but the day before that, it was up what? It went up 40% the day before, so up 43% in two days. Uh, not ever a good long, like right whenever that you're just there. So, uh, was it, there wasn't really any kind of, I mean, hidden bullish average argument, but it just extended on. It's like, how would you even know, you know? It, it was kind of really almost impossible to read any sort of valid divergence or it would be actionable, right? To take a long, like, oh, I see it now. It was just too, it wasn't good enough, right? I don't think. Sometimes you have it and it looks really good, and sometimes it's way too choppy to tell. But the definitely the four hour gave you a better look, right? Like all the, it just continued diverging, like quadruple divergence on the MACD in the end, right? So, and it touched that 200 moving average, and that's where it went. But uh, I, I don't know, man. Like I wouldn't be 
taking it along now. You had a bearish engulfing candle kind of on the, uh, definitely on the four hour going into the close on Friday. Wow, man, Bitcoin, the resilience for now, for now. Bitcoin currently up, uh, yep, 3.8%, $1,788 off its low point from just uh, an hour ago or something, right? So yeah, that, this is what can, all right, so I mean, like anything, hey, you missed the boat, whatever, we're looking at it anyway, this, these are areas, like congestion zones are certainly where reversals or major markdowns can be, again, just as easily as this held and spiked. You understand, this is also an area where if it can't catch the bids or the demand, it can have major markdowns, like the implications of breaking the congestion zone can be just as bad as you can get a 40% up day, you could also get a 40% down day. So that's just like uh, education, congestion zones, man. That's what you're looking for. That's where at congestion zones, that's where you're looking for all those variables we talk about, the cake baking analogy, right? Look for all the divergence that you had plenty of on the four hour MACD. You're looking for pattern completion zones of harmonics. You're looking for, uh, you know, Bulkowski falling wedges, inverse head and shoulders. You're looking for uh, ascending triangles, right? You're, you're looking for all those things at these levels and we call these critical areas. There's a song for the game made. Yep, cure to Bitcoin, the one that like was a great, uh, great potential. Well, I mean, it's like, remember we had the, this is a great uh, chart, okay? Based on the fact that it's, it fell a very, very nice range, right? I mean, undeniable like zone between uh, 242 sats and 878 sats. It fell out of it for a while, right? The, the sellers, they pushed it out. That's not good, right? Uh, when you can't when you fall out of a range that's so well developed but when an asset the sellers just try and try they fail they relent and the bulls take back over and it got back inside this zone of congestion it's still there it's in this in the dead middle of it down seven percent today um this is normally like as low as the risk of an area you could ever get like this is it these are the areas where uh you know i'm not saying this one because i don't know about cure to bitcoin but uh if it was like amazon or google or just like nvidia or Bitcoin itself or Ethereum, you know, where we knew a little bit more about it. But this is where people, smart money, take their longs, right? And eventually what'll happen is it chops around for a while. It could take like a month or something, but eventually this happens. That, that's exactly what occurs over and over and over again. So it, this is just a, a great example of a low risk, high reward opportunity area for an entry, but it's cured a Bitcoin. I don't know anything about it. It could be like literally, a guy like in his underwear in a garage somewhere, okay, in the Midwest. And it's like Aerotine Industries or something, right? It just, so yeah, looking right back at it, uh, nothing changed besides trying to hold the lowest risk area ever that could exist for this, okay? That's it. you want man the monthly terrible zoom in on the monthly it still does it doesn't really look any better I mean technically last month you know the month of March a bullish engulfing candle occurred nice fall through immediately after so uh, you got that going for you I guess which is nice so now what ha must happen it must Right. One will be taking their entry at levels where it is now and, uh, you know, holding till, you know, the 750, 870 area. So let's see how it goes, man. On Cure. Put on the watch list, man. Okay. Because if you're like genuinely trying to invest in yourself and learn about swing trading, this is a, a specimen, a literal specimen. For just a, this is just a, a form of trading, right? You have range-bound trading, you have trend trading, divergence trading, 
pattern trading, all different types. And this is a, a great one, okay? Uh, normally, if you really wanna know, normally like range bound trading, I mean, yeah, it could be Wyckoff stuff down here, but man, normally you wanna see ranges and rectangles like, um, and more so than taking longs and multi-year or the all-time downtrend taking like you know the trend is really bullish and you're taking longs at the bottom of the the rectangles the ranges right so this is like all-time bear trend so okay sweet so that's it though that's all the uh, requests i mean you know figured with bitcoin dumping um, or it's recovered like literally almost the entire four hour candle at this point. But I figured, you know, on dump days like this, the requests are few and far between. And you notice like most of them weren't even cryptos. So I get it, man. Oh, we got to go to cake, man. We, or we, at least, we at least have to look at the, uh, publication so we can finally this will be the first time on stream we've looked at the play-by-play -play. here it is cake i need cake 29.99 someone said they were going to join the paint the annual patreon if it ever hit 29.99 we didn't get anyone that joined the annual patreon today so we have a literal liar okay but this is one i gave away for free on stream we, we i made this chart, chart publication on stream entry was 10 bucks third profiting level 29.99 Whoever you are, shame on you. There it is. It's done, dude. All right. Jesus, John. Hmm. So, I mean, on cake, man, you know, understand. Like, I, I don't know how this is going to play out. It's probably maybe depending on Bitcoin a little bit, but, dude, if. Cake can break 30 bucks. It might just be one of those dash trade setups again where you get third target. They all made sense. But then you break $30, you go into price discovery mode and you go to $40, $50, and it's like, oh my God. What can you do? You can have a moon bag, right? You can 25%, 25%, 25%, you hold, and then you let 25% ride. It's all house money at that point. And who knows? You know, but that's the thing, man. You hold 25, you have a stop loss somewhere, right? You say, I will not uh, settle, I'm out of this thing, you know, if it falls below the previous low of $22. Like a stop on that last remaining amount, or 10% of your moon bag or something, right? Having it just down there, so you know, you lose a lot, like of your small 10% holding before it gets stopped out, but it could sell off, go to $24, make a higher low, and then go again, and then goes into that price discovery, $40, $50 area right so you know there are ways to distract like you have to like it's just it's a wild market man really wild market okay um i don't know man i've been live for an hour now so what else there to talk about besides Ethereum's amazing. Ethereum's the chosen one. Ticket to prosperity is Ethereum over Bitcoin right now, in my opinion. I I'm telling you, like, dude, the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart, that's all you need to know. The Ethereum to Bitcoin chart is Wyckoff phase E of accumulation. Schematic, right? Phase E. It's over. It it's now time for the major markup phase to begin. Right, go to Cardano. Let's let's go back in time. This one, and on Cardano, man, could be Wyckoff distribution. At the same time, this could also be an extremely low risk area for Cardano. Right, right, look at those. You see this range, right? We just talked about range bound trading. So it's either screwed soon, where it's going to. It could be possibly in phase D, going on E of Wyckoff distribution. But at the same time, this is like where a long position could be acquired for a run up to 145 at the top of the range. But gotta be careful after such a tremendous markup, right? The composite operator made his signature very, very clear on Cardano many months ago. 
This was his signature chat, all right? This is what we we're witnessing right now on Ethereum to Bitcoin. This, okay? We're, we're like around this level on Ethereum to Bitcoin, okay? So what happened after the composite operator acquired all of his position he could ever want, right? The markup phase began and you went into insane, you went to insane levels. But now, unfortunately, you could be, the composite operator could be letting you know he's done. He's done with Cardano for now, and it might be, he might be offloading his position to where eventually you get uh, a markdown to like 60 cents or lower. Okay, you can go to 38 cents. You just gotta be careful, man. At these levels, it's high risk. Despite it being at a low risk area, you have to understand why cop himself, okay? So just um, take heed of this. Be careful on Cardano. But they're in Bitcoin, dude. So good. What a great example, All right? I mean, dude. Daily. Yeah, man. It's it's like the markup phase has not even begun. The markup phase will take you to eight point five million. Uh, you know. 10 million sats, 12 million sats, right? Test all time highs. So, patience required. Just make higher highs, higher lows. You just keep doing it. You just keep on making higher highs, higher lows. Be alert. Oops, sorry. Is it going to pair ball yet? I don't, I don't think so. No, just a standard linear trend line. Look at it, beautiful. Beautiful trend line, lots of touches. You fell below it like once. Or you, you back tested it. It's like you sprung, you back tested the demand line. Nice. Let me click the checkout button. Any trick to it? Uh, you know me. Thanks for the. Uh... Is that a joint? I don't know. Um, I've never had an issue with it. I know no one else has really ever complained about it. Is there some something wrong with the merchandise chat right now? Is it sold out? Hopefully we will hear it again soon. Oh, we got a new one. Nice. We got a new one, Brad. I think that's what you're talking about. Oh, that's easy. All right, we'll we'll ban that one too. Easy. It's fine. So um, now one thing that could happen that hasn't occurred yet. Okay, so please understand. It could, Ethereum to Bitcoin has broken out. Okay, and the top of the range was like 4.1 million satoshis right here. That high from January 2019. You broke it. So. Oftentimes, you back test what was once resistance as support, but at the same time, there could just be too much demand. It may never get there. It, again, it's like on the daily, major bullish engulfing candle going on, where the next target is 5.2 million. And you just gotta wonder if Bitcoin can just stop, the US dollar pair on Bitcoin can just stop selling. Ethereum could see all time highs. Whenever, whenever this wave, this wave will an, uh, eventually end, man. Please understand if you're newer, this is gonna end. There will be a Japanese candlestick reversal. There'll be a green candle again eventually. The selling will stop at somewhere, right? And um, the way the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart looks, any kind of relief rally from Bitcoin on the daily is going to usher in all-time highs on on Ethereum to the US dollar, most likely. Okay, just the way it's been going. Don't buy SPE. SPE is a scam. They are just trying to get you to buy their trash coin, right? They're just one of the many new loser coins that are just popping up because of the hype and the unsuspecting new market participants in this crypto space. SPE is a scam. You will lose your money. Don't touch it, okay? Any And any project that comes in uh, that uh, they coordinate uh, a raid on this chat, I will never advocate. I will, I will literally advocate... As an influencer, I'll advocate that they never touch your trash, your crap, okay? So you just bet, you you are in better shape not spamming your crap because I'm going to inverse what you say. Don't buy SPE. Don't do it, dude. Again, we're in here mining our own business. Right? Looking for low risk reward opportunities using te traditional technical analysis. It's been researched over 100 years. Okay, every day for three years and a quarter, seven days a week. 
and then you get these nobody loser coin shillers and spammers coming into this community that we've been building nonstop every day. And they're trying to take your money. That's what they're trying to do, man. Don't let them take your money. Don't be stupid. Don't fall for this crap. Not once have I ever advocated for a cryptocurrency. Not once have I taken money from a crypto, but I've had countless. I'm talking like over a thousand at this point, different loser coins, marketing people reach out to me. They want they want their logo right here. They want that. They want me to shill for their coin. Every day I get one. Every time, not interested or ghost or block. Thanks for the 1,600 people here. Thanks for the 523 likes. You know we'd get 600 likes in seconds if y'all tried, okay? Ethereum up 2.3% on the day where Bitcoin's down. Two point, almost 3%, right? It's wonderful. And we probably should do a poll on Ethereum to the US dollar or something, you know, like, um, is Ethereum going to be seeing all-time highs anytime soon, or is it is this like momentum? I don't know. It's a higher high double top. It kind of looks like oh, it could be a, a head and shoulders developing. It just looks too too strong right now. Good God, man! It's crazy. It's China to me, China, China. On red, I was probably in the middle of something, right? I doubt that I did that intentionally. My previous message went on red. The A to BTC looks the same as F to BTC. So what's the difference? Why are we comparing F to BTC with A to the US? Oh, because of education, egg. Literally education. That's why. Because I'm trying to show people where smart money acquires their, their position. That's why. So if Cardano looks similar to Ethereum to Bitcoin, then then it could outperform a Bitcoin for the foreseeable future, right? That's why. That means like maybe it doesn't sell up. Maybe it hit, it's at the bottom of the range and it it could rally. Like this is where it could certainly rally. But it's just uh Yeah man, that's up up thrust maybe. After distribution, I don't know. It's uh, there are multiple schools of thought, right? There was divergence too. It rallied and then sold off again. If Bitcoin dumps, this thing's gonna break the support and it's gonna fall for sure down to like 89 cents. You'd think like just that next low. So, oh yeah, dude. Sorry, I need to pin that to the chat. Whoops, sorry, I didn't have my uh, Discord up. Yeah, here, here's the Discord link. Join it. We got almost 13 member, 13,000 members strong in the Discord. Join it. Uh, you get notified when I go live. Educational resources where like-minded individuals continue this conversation when this live stream inevitably ends. Many reasons to join. Do you think it would be smart to buy ETH right now or wait for the BTC green candle? I mean, it just depends on your strategy. Are you are you just going long because you want to go long? I mean, the, the, this is, I mean, like, I'll tell you, I added to my Ethereum position over the past couple days uh, from cash. Just based on the way it looks, uh, the higher lows, I get the double top, I get the daily. Um, it's just kind of like, even if it sells off, I mean, I'm probably going to continue adding to Ethereum until it hits 1750 and I'm not worried about it because of the long term. It's better than cash. Well, you know, it just depends on your situation too, because some people have a lot more cash than others. So not like a, I mean, 
a value area per se, a traditional value area per se, but uh, again, I like the higher lows. I love that they're in a Bitcoin chart and that has definitely made me change my tune about Bitcoin. And you know, it, I just think Ethereum looks so much better. Where if, if once Ethereum, once Bitcoin starts catching any sort of relief rally on the U.S. dollar, any sort, Ethereum's gonna go test 2,500 again for sure, and probably all-time highs, like easy. So I'm not telling you to buy, and it's not really like a great trade setup area, maybe you know that we're always looking for, but uh, just depends on your strategy. Are you a long-time holder? Because this is kind of like me taking long-term positions, okay? And, and I just love the fact that just how many times it held above the old all-time high as support. And I love the convergence. You're like about to go positive on momentum, and and the fact that uh, Bitcoin is near, like, is at a 78% retrace. You know, uh, you think a relief rally at some point could occur, but uh, at the same time, it could keep selling off, just as Ethereum would keep selling off, but. When Bitcoin sells off, Ethereum will sell off too, but it will outperform. And so the selling will just be not as bad. And that's where the continuation of like a averaging down on that Ethereum position would occur. All right. So So beer grin. Noise, noise. Yao Mitch, thanks for this community. I am glad I joined, especially the last few weeks. Do you have a moment to look at Grin? Are we close for some kind of edge here? Oh, I don't know, Grin. I forgot that thing existed. Uh, yeah, wow. I mean, I guess I'm looking at something different than I was. Wow. Yeah, dude, Grin, uh, right, this is like Composite Operator existed down here on Grin, didn't he? Yep, for a long time. And you broke out. You broke the, the range, and you've now back tested the range. And yeah, if, if like, oh, this is great. I mean, your bullish engulfing candle will be confirmed on the daily in 43 minutes. Very strong. That could be a buying signal, right? What was once resistance, resistance, resistance for oh so long. What was also support, support, support. Is support again? Yeah, very bullish. I mean, like, and it's, it's like pretty, you know, it's up 12.39%. So dang, man, right? It's, it's the only thing I don't like about it. like anytime it's up 12% right now, Taking an entry on it, eh, it could sell off seven, eight, nine percent before going higher tomorrow, right? So you're just thinking about like how to size up and manage risk here, right? Just having that stop loss below that obvious, like the bottom of the top of the zone, right? Because it was kind of like a, a zone of uh, resistance, you know. I mean, I think that was it, man. That's this what we just witnessed was the backup, the BU on Wyckoff accumulation. It's the lat, it's the end. The end of the whole phase of accumulation. So the target, obviously, I think would be 157 if it holds. Not quite good enough. If you want to have that stop loss strategically below that that high from August 10th of last year, you might have to settle for taking profit at the top, like at, at 168, and that's 3.19 to one reward to risk on Grin. So this could be it. I mean, this is exactly the stuff that happens, right? I mean, sorry about the beep, but this is exactly what Ethereum Classic did, right? The, that range, right? The top of the range right here back from, uh, that was June of 2019 right there, that peak, you know, initially Ethereum Classic broke it, went nuts and then sold off violently, went from $18 to $8 just to back test that area and once that back test was successful and you started climbing on up what happened it's two or three targets very very fast right so uh that's definitely uh an occurrence that could be going on with grin yeah 
the backups occurred. Bullish engulfing candle could be the buying signal, hidden bullish divergence. If you get follow through off this, it's very close. It's almost just like uh, class B. Yeah, it's like class B bullish divergence, right? Where you have one bottom and then about the exact same bottom with much higher levels of negative momentum, impending price action continuation being implied. Target uh, three, the target would be 168. And then like, you know, if it ever broke above that, Holy crap. <clears throat> Above 168, the next target would be, I think it would be like 350 to 370. Hey, when it We're talking like up there. I mean, that's that's the same thing I just talked about. I, the same trade setup that was successful on Ethereum Classic now on Grin going on, man. And then above that, forget about it. It'd go up to freaking uh, like 643 if it ever broke 370. So yeah, Grin looks actually amazing right now. I can't believe it, dude. Are we cool? I want to understand what's happening. The issue kind of, the, the only problem I have right now is it's up almost 13% on the day. So like, you know, it it's tough to like, want to go long into an asset that is currently up that amount on this specific day, right? That's the only thing I have a problem with a little bit. Other than that, it's amazing. Anything above, uh, anything above, uh, 80 cents, 74 cents bullish as F. Okay. Chat. So grin could be a winner. There's that zone just so you can see, all right? Just so you can visualize, it helps, helps you visualize what I'm talking about. You know, OMG did similar stuff before it went absolutely ape, ape S. Okay, Grin, there you go, man. All right, sorry, spending too much time on it, but it's like quality and it's worth it, right? It's like, this is the one where I would wanna spend time on it because it's so educational and it's so low risk of an entry area and it, it could be time for this one to go absolutely ludicrous, all right? so. Put it on your watch list. Or one could take it long if they wanted. You get it. Oh, that was it though. That was the last request. So beautiful, man. Beautiful. It's almost like you publish it. Whatever. Public. Yeah. Publication. Like trend analysis, technical indicators for sure. No chart patterns, no harmonic patterns. Thanks, Beer Grant, again, dude, for the very high quality uh, request, as well as the contribution to the stream. Can we look at UNI USD? If you want, sure. Mitch, we've been trying to reach you in regards to your car's extended warranty and also what do you think of BAT slash BTC Bear? Hey, what's up? Two door. Oh yeah, is that true? You've been trying to get in touch with me? Yeah, I think you've uh, left me like 10 trillion uh, voicemails from 10 trillion different numbers. I remember you. Thank you, dude. Yeah, I'll get. I'll, I'll call you back in a million years. Thank you. Let me tell you something about uh, VRBO and Airbnb. It's trash, man. Trash service. Awful. Every time you try to book something, you book it, you pay for it, all that stuff or whatever. <clears throat> and then you get a message like a day or two later and they're like, oh, I'm sorry. Even though it said it was available on those days, it's not available. 
We have all these other sketchy properties that have no pictures that we would love you to take. We love you to get on. Uh, would, uh, or hey, this is not available. Would you? Uh, you have flexible days. Sorry, it's it's such a, a rip off. It's stupid. It's like a time wasting. I don't know. It's like a masochist dream, man. Where you're like doing everything it says to do. You do it, man, and it just never works. It, there's always some stupid problem, always. So screw those services, man. I'm about to all in hotels, man. So Mr. X, dude. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. When there was once no request, there are now multiple requests. Now Blitzkrieg in me, dude. That was nice through Rising Valley as it played out, then dumped. Okay, let's clean slate here. Nice uptrend, still. Just non stop, man. Non stop, just going, dude, right? Floating on. I mean, it's just a nice big uptrend. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Ethereum. Somewhat. I wonder, is it like that? Something like that going on. You go from that high, then... Well, then I'd have to use that wick, wouldn't I? Yeah. So, nice uptrend. Bullish and golden candle in the midst of being painted. Uh, no real edge. Nothing like sticking on the daily. It's just such a nice uptrend, man. You know, the 4-hour? It, dude, it's like Ethereum. It, it, it's it looks good. It's it's almost identical to Ethereum. Uniswap. It, except you know Ethereum's probably a little better because it's above that uh, heart line, right? Look at that a resistance, support, resistance. Now resistance again. It's pretty good. I mean, it's it's not bad. Uh, there's you got a zone of resistance, support. Uh, you're just in the dead middle between pretty much thirty-two dollars, thirty-five dollars, right? Uh, you're holding. Look, what was once resistance just became support on this four-hour candle and the two hundred moving average held. So uh, I don't know, man. Like it looks like Ethereum to the U.S. dollar. Probably just going to do what Bitcoin does eventually, but it's up ten percent today, which is amazing, right? So what is Ethereum up today? Three point five percent. So yeah, man. If it looks like Ethereum, that means it's probably the same near same market participants, and eventually this thing could be going to the top of the the range again, or the zone, or sorry, the the channel, which is like forty two forty. It's nice, impressive. I'm I'm impressed by the Uniswap chart. Wow, should probably add that one to watch list and monitor it more. It's it's great, strong. For now. So much reading. Dude, it's been a nightmare booking in Miami, dude, for this uh, Bitcoin conference. It's been like the worst ongoing nightmare. Where you know you go to you go to sleep and you you're in the nightmare and then you wake up and you're like, oh my god, that was a scary nightmare. And then you're like walking around, getting coffee, getting ready, to, you know, for your day. And all of a sudden, really bad things happen. You're like, oh my god. And then you wake up again and it's Oh, that was another nightmare. It's like one of those. That's Brad in my experience currently booking on those trash applications. Okay. Whew. Yeah, dude, Uni's going to do what Ethereum does probably based on its identical chart at this point. Feel bad to BTC, clean slate here. Oh, interesting spot, right? Really interesting spot on that. I mean, this is an old, very critical ice line from March 2018, September 2018. As you can see, March 2020, look at this, uh, July 2020. Once you broke it, devastated. But here we are, right back at it, 
right back at this level where if you could eventually hold it, uh, it could be in good shape. For upside, I would think that if it's gonna, if it's gonna hold 2115 as support, it's probably going up to 31, 37, 33, 21, top of the zone. That I mean, that's that's like perfect, right? That's look how much, so many touches there are. It's ridiculous. So, um, is there an edge right now? There could be hidden bullish divergence if it begins to you know lose negative momentum. It just keeps building it. It's at its highest level of negative momentum since September of last year, right now. So, yeah, it's in an uptrend, and it's at critical areas. That it needs to hold on to. And if it gets above it long enough, eventually 31, 37, 33, 31. Not like at, oh, it's time, it's actionable right now, time to take a long. Because, right? Look at the context. It, the asset just from early January to now is up 252%. So it's not value, but I'm just, we're talking about the correlation to critical ice lines from history, from years ago. And it's trying to get above it. And if it does, it could go to the next level. Right. Same time, things that could happen, uh, it could come down to 1600 again to back test that ass support for the first time ever. Right. That's always possible before it goes again and then eventually breaks back above 2115 and then sees 3137. All right. We have less than 30 minutes until your daily weekly candle close. If you're enjoying the live stream, the like button, the bell, that sub. Did we get uh, 600 likes? We got 700 likes. We got 760 likes. So we get 800 likes in literal seconds too. We got nearly 1,600 people still here. So we can do it, man. It's good. I mean, like the amount of likes does matter. It helps with the algorithm. People will finding me when the video goes static. I mean, your like does count for sure. It helps with growth. So it's like, hey, what you, you know, when I, I'm saying what I'm preaching, you want it to grow, you want this community to grow, you hitting that like button is your way of doing it. How is it reporting okay. taxes on the BTC pairs like ETH to BTC? Any more of a headache than normal? Thanks. Oh, uh, well that's where you would plug in, you know, your API like on Coinly or something like that. Uh, you know, and it can be done for you. So if you're using a third party service, it shouldn't be more difficult at all okay yeah i could imagine it'd be a crazy headache if you don't use a third party skinny feet so what's the other one uh Quinley and the rival god it's like uh someone help me out cryptotax.com what was it coin tracking coin tracker yes that's it it's in ledger you want to use third-party servers, especially if you're doing BTC tra pair trading. Yes. Pay your taxes. Okay. Oh, I think uh, the IRS has now created this new little subsector of themselves that they're literally. What was the name of it? Did someone did someone read that today? where they're actually looking for people evading taxes with crypto specifically oh yeah dude they're coming for you you don't want to you need to pay your taxes dude they, they will they are working hard that you're paying the government taxes some you know you've been doing it well now they they're investing resources of that tax money to find people hidden treasure that's what it is slurry so yeah hidden treasure correct No, I mean, task force, whatever. Yeah, old news. But I'm talking about, like, literally some, the name of it. Something was published today on it. So, anyway. Um, what did you say? Was it a bearish what? To what? This is Moderna. You know, they buy uh, biotech, create the vaccines and all that. It could be a bullish canary. Oh my god. Potential bullish canary pattern. 
uh, yeah, testing an old all-time high from November 30th of last year. Oh man, it's like why is no one requesting the Moderna when on the daily on the second bottom it was showing classic class A bullish divergence. No one was requesting this asset here. You, oh, it could have been wonderful. I can't find everything, but like, dude, one low, second low. Sellers were implying that they were certainly exhausted and look at the manifestation of that exhaustion. A markup all the way to old all-time highs. But it's also, you could definitely declare that this is a range and you're nearing the top of the range. But yeah, I mean, that's spectacular. A low than the higher lows very very strong so you can't sit like for a swing trader like i can't tell you oh great time to long now it's hard to say that same time it's like oh it's ascending triangle behavior if it ever does break 186 and and it could go into price discovery it could go nuts well well we're talking about the canary and not even a joke what were you asking about bearish cipher on moderna yeah, yeah, there could be, there you go. And that's what I'm saying. Like it's you can't be like it's time to long now when you have painted a lower low on C right here. A little too shallow. You want to be 113% minimum criteria on C or only 110786. Hey, you are the pattern completion zone of somewhat of what could be considered a bearish cyber pattern. Yeah, and it's old all-time highs. Uh, so it's a resistance. So you have confluence with the pattern completion zone of the harmonic and an ice line of some sort so um the thing is there's no bearish divergence on the daily but yeah great identification there that that is you know arguably a bearish this is where a reaction could occur so reaction doesn't mean it's going to going down to the bottom right even though it could a reaction where you catch price action where maybe all that happens is bullish consolidation before it marks up again so yeah, this is not an area where someone's like, ah, it's time to take a long Moderna. No, it's the area where people sometimes, people be taking profit from, from the, the divergence trade. The, you know, that's, yeah, makes sense. So it doesn't mean go short. It just means that people could be taking profit. It's an area where a reaction or reversal could occur. But beautiful chart, a very nice accumulation is extremely real from this low to these two lows, yeah with a cell wall. So it's like almost ascending triangle behavior. All right. Mr. X, thank you for the 25. This is a grin was great, man. That was awesome. So still there's no, nothing yet, man. No Japanese candlestick reversal on the daily yet for Bitcoin. And not really at a support, but we do know we're at a deep retrace from that uh, March, I'm sorry, that February 28th low, right? We're at like a 786. I think we even fell lower than the 786, or we might have just touched it perfectly this time. So reaction, this is where an, an area where a reaction could occur if you're talking about pure harmonics, okay? So a reaction, which just manifests into a lower high than the previous high, equals probably all-time highs on Ethereum. How crazy is that? Yep, that's it. No, it's out of the channel too. Maybe you look at like a wedge like this, or you look at like a channel. No, it's out of everything. Yep. I've been live an hour and a half. It's been a decent stream. And despite the circumstances of uh, just, you know, Bitcoin sucking and a lot of altcoins not looking great, but there is one that look looks. I mean, now it's too, it's like Grin looks great actually, technically. Ethereum to Bitcoin looks stupid good. And not so sure about Ethereum to US dollar, but my God, it's making higher lows it's a it's above the heart line of the channel it's been in since my god january 11th it's on the top end of the channel not the bottom end what was once resistance 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 is now support 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 you keep bouncing off this long enough you keep showing accumulation you're eventually gonna run at the top of the channel again you can go to 2600 that's where you gotta be careful because is it a head and shoulders hey, hey it could be like that would be the target from here if it was gonna rally it's going up to like 2550 
to test that, you've got to break through that. You break through that, you're going to 3K. So, yeah, man. Bitcoin Cash, we got to look at for a second because it is just at a level where if it can hang on, man, what was once resistance could be support. It's still trying. It like a Bitcoin catches a relief rally. Bitcoin Cash is going back up to 852, 874 again to at least test it. Yeah, I know, man. Scammy wicks. This is how it happens, dude. This one's not as good as Ethereum just because the BTC chart. Yeah, it's like all this bullshit virgins and nothing happened, right? It's like no, no uh, follow through. Yeah, critical levels above uh, 752 is uh, very good, very very good stuff. But the thing is, even if it keeps selling off, it's it, it's going to be in a falling wedge. Even if it keeps selling off, as long as it makes a higher low than this March 25th low 462, it's still in a very very bullish trend, man. Like undeniably. And BNB, like the remember the bullish alternate bat pattern? It's hanging on. This one it could be destined for six hundred dollars again. Yeah, BNB looks like it could be headed to six hundred dollars if Bitcoin catches any sort of relief rally in this coming week. Okay. Remember, there's a gap that must be filled on Bitcoin, a major one, right? And Bitcoin futures. And remember, silver is the one right now. Silver, composite operator, reaccumulating his position. And we're getting right back above a critical ice line that the longer you stay above it, huge markups, huge percentage gains, huge appreciation in value. So, I mean, a lot of things I was scanning look almost identical to Bitcoin right now. So, Anyway, all right, so I'm gonna let y'all go. Thank y'all for coming out. Uh, appreciate the likes, love, support, contributions, everything in between. 20 minutes till your weekly close. I hope you uh, had a wonderful weekend and I hope that uh, the week ahead is even better than it was last week. We'll see a relief rally on Bitcoin so Ethereum can go test 2500 again, all right? So I'll be back. Until next time, respect the T. Hey.
Hopefully we again has been born. Oh my god, we did it, dude. We survived the terrible week. Maybe this week will be a lot better. Things will change. Theorem goes all the time. I was all right. Amen. I like robots. I have a robot vagina. Bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei. Price gonna dip. I I don't know, sir. And then, just like that. Adios, turd nuggets. <laughs>